It was a game that had garnered controversy during the height of the arcade scene, full of graphic violence many years before titles like Mortal Kombat come to mind. A game where you play the role of a murderer, as you torture your victims until literal death, from refusals to supply the game in the arcades to an unofficial release on the NES, Chiller is known as a game that almost never made it to the eyes of the general public. Who finds it comfortable to develop a game that is as controversial and as insensitive as this? For this year's Unearthly Valley, we dive into the darkest and grotesque past of the light gun game Chiller by Exidy. From 1974 to 1983, Exidy was a powerhouse in coin-operated manufacturing amusements. They were famous with light gun games such as titles like Crossbow. They brought a different type of style to the video gaming genre, which would be dubbed named as the on-rail shooter, where gamers' task is to protect characters walking through a screen by shooting down obstacles and anything trying to kill their main character. Another twist Exidy brought to the gaming world was fully digitized sound that they would end up putting into their later titles. Their sound effects and music were far more advanced than other games before the 16-bit generation of consoles had. Exidy was founded by both Pete Kaufman and Samuel Hawes in 1973. Pete Kaufman started in the gaming industry as a marketing executive for a company called Ramtech in 1972. Ramtech was a manufacturer of computer graphic displays and coin-operated video games. In late 1973, Pete Kaufman left Ramtech to establish Exidy with Samuel Hawes, who at the time was with a company called Ampex as an engineer. When he decided to leave Ramtech and start his own company, Pete believed that coin-operated video games would become a significant business. However, when Exidy was developing games, it had to keep in mind that it was going to compete against more larger and more well-established companies such as Taito and Atari. Then, in around 1975, they would release their first five games. These titles would include TV Pinball, Table Foosballer, Alley Rally, Destruction Derby, and Old Time Basketball. The company had a bit of success in the 1980s, when they released the quiz game Facts. Fax was a multi-level game stored in large wooden boxes that stood around 4 feet tall. The game was different from other video games at the time, as it would allow you to answer a variety of questions until the clock ran down to zero. Players are to pick an answer before the clock would run down, and players who answer correctly the quickest would earn the most points. Exidy would continue to explore this uniqueness in the game-making market. Among some other newest releases that have never been attempted before were motion cabinets for games such as Vertigo and Top Gunner. One of the developers, Dick Ptolemy, was one of the developers that put together vector graphics for these games. Another successful game from Exidy was Top Secret, which would release in 1986. The game featured a mission inside the Soviet Union with an advanced spy car that contained unconventional weapons to destroy the heavily guarded secret weapon. Exidy also made an incursion into the home computer market around 1978 under the leadership of Paul Terrell. They entered the home computing market with their first and only hardware model known as the Exidy Sorcerer, which was a modified S100 bus-based machine that launched onto the internal expansion system common to other 100 systems. The Exidy Sorcerer also boasts an advanced text display with 64 characters per line. This was in an era where only systems supported 40 characters at the time. The odd thing with the Sorcerer was that it did not support sound, color, or graphics. And this is odd if you consider the company's background in video games. Even though the Sorcerer was not successful in North America, it did find some bit of a foothold over in the European countries. Exidy was given all into the video gaming market and wanted to do more to push the envelope on certain topics that would be hard to justify for development. They built a reputation that would eventually receive a lot of controversy for its unique game cabinets that would eventually stand out from the rest. But in all their efforts, 
They were not getting the breakthrough that they needed with their previously released games. They had some success with certain titles, but they also released too many forgettable ones around the time with titles such as Starfire, Venture, and Mousetrap. Starfire and Mousetrap at least received some bit of recognition for being featured in films and albums. Starfire was featured in the 1980 film Midnight Madness and received an accolade for being in a song that was featured in the Pac-Man Fever album. When they released Death Race, it gave Exidy the publicity at the time for its violent content nature, and they needed to continue the momentum by attempting to push the envelope even further. So developers were asked to go crazy and develop something that could capture players' attention for 15 to 30 seconds. They were told to develop a game that was both sick and twisted as humanly possible, and to keep pushing the envelope further each time. There were four men that were a part of the development team. Vic Ptolemy, Howell Ivey, Larry Hutcherson, and Paul Terrell. The four people on the team dreamt up of the current concept for the game, and in one room, they all sat together to work and implement the idea the best way possible onto a primitive mid-70s 8-bit microprocessor. Ultimately, they came up with the ability that required to show absolute horror. The game had no fear of morale and decency. For the game of Chiller, it consists of four primary levels. The first level is called the Torture Chamber. The game player is presented with an unarmed prisoners that are chained to a misery apparatus. These unlucky prisoners have no means to defend themselves or cause harm to the player. They moan and wallow in misery as the game player points and shoots at them with the light gun that they have in their hand. There are no fight backs, so the player can take time blowing off faces, limbs, and abdomens in any order. This should tell you enough about the whole entire concept behind Chiller, a game that defeats the purpose of what a light gun game was originally intended to be about. When they think you have done enough torture in the torture chamber, you are qualified to do even more in the other levels. So they move you to the Rack Room, where the number of harmless prisoners in bondage is doubled. Stretched out on torture racks and at the mercy of the game player, who has no idea what their crimes are, the game player goes through all of these levels torturing characters with no justification. Since the player's character is not presented, they can assume the role of an assassin or an exorcist. The strangest thing about this game you should know about is its strange transition. Chiller shifts from torture to a more traditional shooting game, where you defend yourself against ghosts, ghouls, and zombies in the following levels. A haunted house hallway and a graveyard. The four developers working on Chiller ensured the game was intentionally ugly, and that was one of their main purposes for wanting to make the game as grotesque as possible. Chiller would be released first in 1985 for the United States for the Commodore 64, and that same year it would be released for the MXS for the European Union. Then in 1986, Chiller would get a release on the Amstrad CPC and the Sinclair CX Spectrum. Finally, an unreleased port was released in 1990 for the Nintendo Entertainment System under the names American Game Cartridges in the US and by Home Entertainment Supplier for the Nintendo NES Zapper and the Standard Controller in Australia. When the NES version of Chiller was released, Exidy tried to soften the unreasonable amount of violence that the game had it with its storyline. Back in the Middle Ages, a castle in the outskirts of town has been invaded by an evil force which is causing the dead to come back to life. You need to stop this force before it can create a large army and take over the town. Each level has eight talismans hidden in it. You need to find and destroy these to stop the monsters from appearing. The NES version of Chiller contains some editing compared to the arcade version. Include removing the nudity on female victims. Initially in the arcade versions, players were able to shoot off clothes off of female victims. They also removed the ability to shoot off the flesh of immovable victims. Additionally, the four levels in the arcade version were then reversed to be put on the NES version instead. Chiller came off as very offensive and extremely bold, which earned the game some criticism and controversy upon release. It sold poorly in the United States because of its senseless violence and encouraging torture and murder of innocent people. Arcade owners in the United States refused to purchase the game and to be able to put out to the general public because of the opposite of what arcade owners wanted to use for their audience. 
and also to be able to have games that would actually have enemies that could defend themselves, rather than not. Nevertheless, Exidy managed to market Chiller to third world countries, which made it a mild success, especially during the arcade scene. The other reason for why it didn't receive any more higher success was because the arcade cabinet business model was dying off. Many arcade game developers were folding mainly because the new competition and also the shift into the home console market was gaining ground. And it was because of this, the game didn't receive the full backlash it would have deserved had it been more popular. It was even rumored that the game was permanently banned in the United Kingdom. However, no reports have been documented from Exidy or the UK government that confirms this. But it is obvious that the game was banned due to gore and nudity, something Exidy tried to correct with the NES version. Chiller has curved a raw slice of ill fame thanks to the gruesome horror theme. Four screens of gore destroy innocent victims and dead creatures who will not even bother to fight back. Pick up a zapper, mutilate the required number of harmless humans on each screen and move to the next level. So what was the end game? To teach kids how to harm others? Or was it to entice teenagers to part with their quarters? Whatever Exidy's vision of Chiller was, it was not worth the short amount of time that people could play the game. Exidy finally dissolved in the 1990s after they couldn't cut it. But Chiller's legacy still lives on today, haunting reviewers and game players alike.